salmon, salmon, the fish. Yeah, it's no. king oh. salmon. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Brother Dennis. We communicated with him. Yeah, that's what I'm, I thought that was you. Yeah, he goes to right. Dominic. Right, right, right. right. Mm. right. Yeah. Mm. I, I came in contact with um, Unification uh, Church. Mm -hmm. It was at the time, 1980. Mm -hmm. I later found out that um, three missionaries were sent out. 120 nations, and Jamaica was one of those 120 nations. Mm -hmm. The Japanese, the German, and the American. Mm -hmm. So I met the movement in 1980. Just, uh, some friend of mine uh, <laughs> uh, said he was, there was a group of us who used to gather you know, after work and play, play badminton, play other dominoes, drink a beer too. <laughs> but one day, one of them, two of them disappeared. So, what happened to these guys? And somebody said they, they met a group. A group. <laughs> and eventually, we saw them. We said, yeah, they went to this meeting, and they can't explain, but maybe I could come to listen. So, you know, I was one of those who really, to be honest with you, um, when I was in high school, I remember um, we had a class class in social studies mm -hmm. and the name Socrates came up mm -hmm. and the name Plato came up mm -hmm. in that class and they said these were philosophers mm -hmm. and they said that the description of a philosopher is a lover of wisdom mm -hmm. so I said well I'm a philosopher because I love wisdom mm -hmm. you know <laughs> yeah and I, and I remember having an old man he used to come to my house every, like on a Friday night and I've been reading the Bible for him mm -hmm. you know he liked Jeremiah, Isaiah, and I had to read everything. And after I read, he would make his commentary, and he would have me up until 10 o'clock sometime reading the Bible for him, you know. And my father got so upset. Why? The boy is up so late. But he, that, that man always told me, you should pray for wisdom and understanding. So I literally used to pray for wisdom and understanding. So when I came to the, the first lecture, because I was all, so because of that, when I was in high school, I, you know, I really had difficulty. Christian thought as presented to me. You know, I was always trying to bore holes in this <laughs> thinking because my, my intellect was working over time, you know. Rapture, you know, physics. How can you be lifted out of your body physically? You know, and then to be very honest, the image of Jesus as presented to me was very difficult to digest. It wasn't so much the man from Galilee, it's the this miracle worker, you know. And, you know, and the whole miraculous thing around him, you know. But then I heard, the first lecture I heard was the fall, and then after, after that, uh, somebody gave me a book with five speeches. One of the members, the Christianity in Crisis, New Hope, five speeches in it. God's Will for Man, um, New Future of Christianity, the Future of Christianity, and those five speeches. And after I read this, I realized that, this man is not the ordinary man. I mean, what drew me to the, the thing was the wisdom that answered all these questions that I had. Mm -hmm. All of them, you know. Mm -hmm. Totally, for the first time, the whole picture of creation, everything made sense mm -hmm. to me. Literally, mm -hmm. made so much sense. Because I was always telling people, I am, a, I am an evolutionary Christian. Because I believe in evolution, but I believe in creation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, both of them had merits, you know. So that's it. So my, my so the first time I my first thing we remember was wisdom. He had all the answers. For me, literally, you know. So I said, well. And then I began to grow and said, well, if this man is so wise, then whatever he's doing must be right. He must be doing the right thing. A wise person doesn't do stupid things. So if he's saying you need to sacrifice, you need to pay indemnity, it's true. And then he said, well, you have to develop your heart. And I said, that must be true. You know, and that's a struggle to change my heart. If I, I, I always said to myself, if you have this knowledge, and then you have to use it. Okay? You cannot be like, have this knowledge and then be like an ordinary person. You know, and that, that was how I, I grew up. Following Reverend Moon, you know, and then I, for the first time I was able to meet Reverend Moon. So that we met like 1980, we were missionaries just in contact with World Mission Headquarters, you know, Reverend Quack would send all these things, mm -hmm. we'd get all the information from Reverend Quack. 
Then I, I met Reverend Moon for the first time in 1988 when we went to the Seoul Olympics, mobilization. And first time I went to Adam Dong and sat with him and <laughs> teaching. And first impression was Reverend Moon looked like a rock, you know, <laughs> <laughs> sitting there in, in the yard. Because I've seen so many pictures yes. before, only the yeah. picture. And I said, oh my God, here is this timeless rock. It has been here for a you know, long <laughs> and will be there all the time. You know, this is, yeah, yeah. same, you know. Yeah. You know, and, you know, and yeah, I, you know, I, I have always felt that um, Reverend Moon and Mrs. Moon are two people that are completely blameless. Mm. I can't blame them for anything. You know, even I had struggles in the church or things went wrong, it's not their fault. You know, because their, their level is, they're, they're completely selfless people. They only live for God, God's will. So, if they're doing something, they have the right motivation, the right intention. So I could never, they're, they're completely blameless people, you know. And yeah, and I've had a few encounters with Father Moon. I remember one encounter in Brazil. I was sitting very close to him, like about here, and he was standing like there, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was listening and you know, holding down my head and said, but he was talking to me and said, why are you, are you confident or not? Ah. Yes, I <laughs> yeah. so, uh, You know, are you confident? Because my head, I guess because my head was down. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh. It demonstrates and confidence, you know what I'm saying? right? Are you confident? So, men, and I would say one of the things that I have really, of course, you know, the love which is like an ocean, which all of us struggle to be like that. But I think one of the things that I, that I have really inherited from Father Moon is mental toughness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've, I've known that. I remember the first time I went to Japan to, to live in a caravan, to fundraise in autumn. Mm -hmm. I remember Mr. Kunotoki said, you, you will die. You will die in Japan. <laughs> so, okay, let's see that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, I landed in Japan in autumn. First time I saw snow was, on, uh, was in Akone. Mm -hmm. First time I saw snow drop, you know, I went out in a ordinary shoes and then I felt my feet getting heavy, you know. <laughs> Tell me, you know. I realized my, sock, my socks are too thin and all that. First time, you know. And I'm saying, well, if I'm going to die, let me die. <laughs> yeah, and I really realize, I, I, I'm really grateful for that because sometimes I might look like a very tough guy, but that's how we, if you live where I live, in Jamaica, you, know, you have to be tough. Mm -hmm. If you're not tough, you, mm -hmm. I, I don't mean brutal toughness, mm -hmm. but you have to mm -hmm. acknowledge rubbish and, mm -hmm. and rubbish it, you know, and, yes. you know, right. you know yeah. so I, I think that was the, 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 the overwhelming thing that where I started from becoming tough guy. If Mount Everest can be climbed, mm -hmm. I can, if it, others can climb, why can't I? Yes. You know, yes. and, and that's a kind of yes. spirit that I, I, I picked up. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then we came to the wilderness period where we had to, like soldiers. I saw Reverend Moon as a heavenly general leading this, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I, it's so interesting. I will just conclude by saying um, that. Of, so I've read a lot of Reverend Yeah, I can tell you. I mean, most people probably didn't read more than I. You know. I read a lot of the testimonies of, the, especially the members of the. Well, I used to like the oldest books I could get to read. What happened in the early days? So I've read a lot of things. Um, but and then recently, one one of the things I've said: How can I? Because we're not so many members. So I've always tried to say: How can I position myself to be most effective? So one day I saw an, uh, you know, um, an advertisement that said, in Jamaica, a group of people are needed to write a standard for public behavior. Um, there needs to, public behavior needs to change. So if I can contribute to that, I think that would be a very good way to make a big impact. So you know, I, I, I went to that meeting. To, you know, we have what is called a Bureau of Standards. Yes. It writes standards for this. If we're going to have plastic plates, it should be so much strength. Standards for, for napkins, standards for everything mm -hmm. is written. But yeah. first time, I think, in the world, mm -hmm. that a Bureau of Standards has decided to you know, use its expertise to write a standard for public behavior. So I joined that. I, I just remember going to the room, and there were 80 people the first day. Yes, we need to do this, do this, do this. The next second meeting, there were 50. Mm -hmm. And the standard took us four years to be written. And at the end of it, there were five. Wow. <laughs> And I was one of them, <laughs> one of five. Very yeah, yeah. yeah. But the interesting thing is that the testimony of, of the other, basically, you know, like the chairperson and the other, you know, if, if I was going into a war, 
this man, Simon, is the man I want to watch my back. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, that is good, that is good, that is good. That they can say that because that's what I want to be. Somebody who is consistent and dependable and, and don't give up. Yeah. Yeah. Ramon has never given up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, that's impressive. That, that, it was so interesting that, so when I used to meet people and, I, and they say, you know, they think, they, they, they think I'm a good person. But they say, I don't like your religion. I said, what? <laughs> I say, my man, you're stupid. Because it is my religion. It is what I know from Reverend Moon that makes me what I am. Yeah. So if you like me, mm -hmm. how do you think I became like this? Mm -hmm. By myself? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I have too much gratitude. You know? mm -hmm. and I just live mm -hmm. gratitude every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not easy to convey you know, some of these things deeply to people. To, uh, you know, but I try, we try. Because that's the thing, I think what is lacking, Father Muna said, what the world lacks is deep thinking and perseverance. Mm -hmm. I, I know I read that somewhere. You know, the thought, the realm of thought today is very shallow. Mm -hmm. People are not thinking deeply. So we, deep thinking and perseverance, and I think that starting with that, thinking deeply, persevering, we will become the loving people. I know if I persevere, I, I, my heart will change, you know. Mm -hmm. right. yes. Yes. Knowledge would be yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.